Mama, that show coming on, you like? I don't like that bullshit. He already started. I don't know why the hell you telling me. Dennis Berlin. That show, mama, you know what I'm talking about. Fuck you. Mama, that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit. He be up late at night, tuning into all his hits. See my grandmama hate him, and my mama and my titty getting mad. Posting comments like we watching real TV. Mama, that go that man, yelling, fuck that nigga, what? He successful attorney on the two, be turning up. We be turning up, turning up, we turning up, yeah. We be turning up, yeah, yeah, we turning up. It's that real spit, like some barbershop talk. Except it's real black man that be walking the fucking walk. Intelligent, well versed. Sometimes we might curse while we cuss a lot. Just like these lovely ladies fuss a lot. Switch it up, tell these pussy niggas gotta pick it up. Move along, me and you ain't brothers, not the womb I'm on. Cross examination on a nigga in the chat room. All the trolls with the disrespect, we in the back room. Huffing and you sucking up the air like a vacuum. Daddy disappeared, told your baby I'll be back. Soon. I just represent us cause the system can't afford it I'm your homie, I'm your brother, sometimes the court appointed Anointed, know you hate it, but I give you fair chosen Just like Jesus in the house of God Kicking chairs over, suit and tie soldiers Get the cold shoulder, the hate and you talking Not a fucking stain on me Watch your dame homie, I got that change on me Black rich, I don't give a shit, bet your dame want me Mama that go that man, he just talk a lot of shit He be up late at night, tuning in to all his hits See my grandmama hate him That's my motherfucking business You ain't got a goddamn thing to do with it I'm in my mama and my TD getting mad Posting comments like we watching real TV Mama that go that man, he talk a lot of shit He be up late at night, tuning in to all his hits See my grandmama hate him and my mama and my TD getting mad Posting comments like we watching real TV Mama that go that man Mama that go that man Yeah, yeah, yeah Mama that go that man To the broadcast. This is Dennis Sperling, man. Big shout out to everybody up in here, man. So uh we got a we got a good broadcast tonight, man. I want to talk about a subject that uh, has been ongoing uh on this particular page, and that is uh specifically the um reputation of African American women. Now, in the past, um their reputation had been that of sapphire. They were sassy. They were deemed to be, uh, uh, you know, sexual objects, objects, if you will. You know, that's that's kind of how they were dealt with. You know, and and and, and people kind of just dealt with that. That was it. That was pretty much where they were. And uh, but for the most part, they were generally regarded as women and thought to be doing the same thing that the rest of the women are doing. But now. Things are different, you know, because typically in any Western society, women are given the benefit of the doubt. You see a woman's tears. Guess what happens? Everybody comes to her aid, you know, and that's been their secret weapon. You know, a woman complains about her man cheating on her. A woman alleges she's been attacked. Everybody automatically jumps to her side and, and is against whoever the man is. 
especially if it's a black man. That seems not to be the case. Um, if you look at the thumbnail, what you see is women who come out and allege some sort of victimhood or from uh, recently to a couple of years back. Most recently, we've been dealing with uh, Jada Pinkett. And then if you look at the thumbnail, matter of fact, I got a picture of the thumbnail. Big shout out to everybody here. Um, I put this up as my thumbnail, and I thought it was very interesting, and this is something that I've been developing for a while. These women, Jada Pinkett, a poor me, I married a rich man I didn't like. Oh, you know, here's, uh, you guys might remember this lady from the summer, Sassy Trucker. She got over there in Dubai, and this is a black woman in, in Dubai. And typically, black people, the knee-jerk response is to come to her aid and allege racism. But that didn't happen. Most people said, well, what did you do? Right? Uh, Carly Russell, right? Even when she was allegedly kidnapped, people were skeptical. They said, "We well, that doesn't make sense. People were looking into the story. People didn't really believe her. Hell, you guys remember when, when this hot young thing right here, straight out of Texas, uh, Meg, Meg the Stallion, when she alleged that old buddy shot her in the foot, maybe he shot her in the foot, but people still didn't believe her and don't believe her now. So what you're seeing is a common thread. Here's another guy, Jada uh, uh, Lupita Nyong'o. She alleges her man cheated on her. Uh, according to the news today, Gabrielle Wilson is Gabrielle Wilson is leaving uh, Dwayne Wade because he cheated on her. Nobody cares. Look at Brittany Grinner. People were happy she got in jail, right? Right? Happy. They was like, you deserve it. And, of course, our very own <laughs> Cynthia G., I don't think any of you all are uh, upset that uh, she got her channel taken. Nobody's sympathetic to this woman at all. So my whole point is this, and this is what I see. Whether it's Jada Pinkett, Gabrielle Union, Cynthia G, Brickface, the Cheesecake Factory lady who I didn't put up here, or most recently this black woman who was in a store here in Texas arguing with some armed security guard, a white guy with a gun, and you know he called her the N-word, but even that, Black people are not up in arms about this black man, this white man calling this black woman the N-word. So what does that tell you? Huh? We like Lupita, Nyong'o, but we don't care that her man cheated on her. We don't care that Dwayne Wade cheated on or allegedly cheated on uh, Gabrielle Union. None of these women have garnered the sympathy that black women in the past who allege victimhood have garnered. Shout out to my man, Jamal Smith. Thank you for being the first person to contribute to the cash app. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate it. He says, shout out to the Blizzard King, the Ice Lords, uh, and to the winter that has arrived. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So this is what we're going to address tonight. I think this is something that's important. Why? Because it explains the trend that we're going to, and it's important to black men because for the most part, their sympathy is usually garnered off the destruction of our reputation as black men. Now, before we get started good, I want to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Somebody type the Blizzard King in the chat room. For you guys who don't know, my name is Dennis Sperling. I'm an attorney also known as Uncle D, but they call me the Blizzard King because I am the bringer forth of the cold shoulder. <laughs> and that cold shoulder has a lot to do with what we're talking about tonight. The indifference that Black men have these days as a result of having to deal with these lovely ladies for so long. So welcome to the broadcast. Make sure you hang in there because we're going to talk about it tonight. Man. We, 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 this is something we're going to talk about. This is going to be one of those professorial style broadcasts. But, you know, you know how I do, baby. Sometimes I get a little carried away with myself and ghetto me comes out and then the, the preacher me comes out, even though I'm not a preacher. 
Uh, but anyway, the fact is, it, it's a welcome. I welcome everybody. I welcome your input. And we're just going to talk about it, okay? Now, um, here's the thing. Um, as I said, none of these women gathered any sympathy. And I'm talking about Lupita, Gabrielle, and all the rest. All these black women, none of them gathered, gathered any sympathy when they came out and alleged that they were victims of some sort of something or oppression or whatever. This girl, the one uh, Brickface, somebody type Brickface in the chat room. Brickface says she got hit in the head, right? She says she got hit in the head. And you would immediately think that people would take her side because she's alleging victimhood, right? But they didn't. They basically said, we want to see more facts. We don't believe you. They began to question her story from the first time she alleged it. Some of y'all, with some of these women, y'all say they outright deserve what they get. Sassy trucker. Somebody type sassy trucker in the chat room. She deserved to go to jail. Y'all was happy to see her and Brittany Griner go to jail. Weren't y'all? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. I think the way that things are right now, I don't think that the 2015 Sandra Bland killing at the hands of that Texas officer, or they say it happened inside her cell a few days later, I don't think it would garner the sympathy and attention if it had occurred in the current climate. Because there seems to be a public black backlash against black women. What I find is that the public at large they, 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 they don't seem as sympathetic as they used to be to the cries of victimization of black women. And I predicted it. I predicted it because it was too much going on social media and people's perception is altered by that. Now, what I'm saying is people are tired. They're tired of the twerking everywhere. They're tired of being hearing the loud, obnoxious uh, voices. You know, they're tired of seeing black American women fighting in people's businesses, being rude and mean to people for no reason. They're also known notoriously for terrible customer service, all that sassy back talking, thinking consequences don't apply to them. Hell, getting free jobs just because somebody needs to meet a quota. They celebrate that behavior as well, which makes it worse. Even the good ones. I'm going to talk about that. And all these women pictured on this thumbnail have exhibited that behavior. And we see it day in and day out. The public. Put yourself in the perception of the public who doesn't even know black women. They may not even live around black people. But what's going on is with the overexposure of their behavior, people are seeing through their narcissism and the absolute refusal to accept accountability for their decision. They're sick of it. You got these 200 pound plus women claiming with a straight face that their dating problems are because of black men or because black men don't like them. This is right after they spend an hour detailing how little respect they hold for black men. And now the world knows the answer for why there's a dating crisis in the black community, specifically why black women are wailing about it. See, the world is getting tired of it. You can't critique them about anything, even though every human being, animal, reptile on the planet, everything is subject to critique, except these lovely ladies. So what's happening is the general tolerance level of these women is reaching or has reached a critical mass, plain and simple. The false abduction claims of Carly Russell, who I spoke about, that didn't help. That only exacerbated the problem. Society is fed up with black women and their victimhood game. And black women have become, you know, the black men that they hate, basically. Black men are actually minding our own business and staying out of trouble for the most part. And people starting to see through the grift, they're beginning, uh, they're being, uh, you know, you know, they've been having game run on them. And they're not willing to play that game anymore. Resources are getting tight. And all, everybody is circling their wagons around their own communities for the most part. Black women 
They've been the most coddled demographic by far and still managed to play the victim card to a T. And it's, in my opinion, based on what I see and based on the direction society headed, it's over. And they're getting their just due. The coddling is over with. People are wising up to this nonsense. It's a glorious day. It's time to watch these out of control ladies get exposed for their true nature and their lies, especially the lies told on decent, good black men, good fathers, good husbands. Who've been lied on? Who've been perpetrated in, 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 in a negative light by women who turn around and play the victim role? But see, the world sees them for the sad state that they've subjected themselves to, done by their own greed, selfish choices, done to destroy their own families. The world can see that black men aren't truly the problem in America. They're not the problem that America tried to make us. The demonizing has to come to an end at some point, and people are seeing that these lovely ladies are not really victims. They're the ones that brought the, they brought the chaos into the world, into the black community. And now they're taking it into other neighborhoods. They're having out of wedlock children for 1.5 million non-black men. Did you know that black women's murder rate per capita is higher than that of white men? Think about that. Shout out to Bernard, Bernard Riley. He did a broadcast on that recently. And this is from the FBI statistics from 2021. Black women have a higher murder rate than white men. Specifically, black women's murder rate is 8.7 per 100,000, and white men's murder rate is 5.2 per 100,000. Think about that. Yeah. How many years did they tell the story about the deadbeat dads being black men? How many media platforms did they use to try to destroy black men's reputation? You can name them. Oprah Winfrey, Sally Jesse Raphael, every movie that uh, Medea was in by Tyler Perry. Well, it's a different day, and the data's out. And they can't use those talking points anymore because organizations like the CDC, blackdemographics.com, have put the story out for, for, uh, to rest forever. And it's no surprise that folks don't feel sympathetic towards black American women anymore. I, mean, I guess you could say there's a new sheriff in town, and it's called The Truth. You see? For the most part, people are tired of ratchetness and misandry. People are tired of Pookie and Ray Ray that they prop up and get impregnated by. People are tired of the mistreatment of good men, good, hardworking men, and the glorification of thought behavior. Now, black Americans, you may feel sorry for them. You have mothers, you have sisters, just like I do. But they earn the consequences of these actions, putting themselves on display for the whole world to see. Now the world knows what black men have been going through. It's the side effects of their actions. It's the backlash of their actions. People are now saying to black men, wow, I guess you guys weren't exaggerating. Now, here's the thing. I want you to understand. White women are being held to task, too. It's not just black women that are out of control. White women are being held to task, too. But again, those are white women. Now, how do I know that white women are being held to task? There's a famous white comedian named Bill Burr. And he gave an epic monologue on Saturday Night Live a few years back where he called out white women and their feigned victimhood. 
But see, here's the di difference. Be Becky will start straightening up. And in this society denominated by white people, white women will always be forgiven in this society. It's just going to happen. And here's another thing you have to understand. She never left her man. White women created feminism so that they could reap the benefit of what white men had attained. By contrast, black women adopted feminism so that they would no longer need their black men. So in turn, black women left their men and they left their families. And when I say they left their families, you can't have a family without a man in, involved in it. It's just some women and some kids. Nevertheless, over the last few decades, they've been systematically and aggressively distancing themselves from black men. Listen to the songs. I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. If you know what that means, I got my own house. I got my own car. I got my own everything. They would proudly, who, what other group of women in this world are known for being strong, independent, and don't need a man? So they have been systematically and culturally separating themselves from the men. That's why 54% of black men are not married and don't have children. You got 30% of black men who are married, of which 25% of those black men in that particular group are married out. which leaves about somewhere under 20% of black men who are out there making these babies. Nevertheless, the vast majority of black people aren't married. That in itself shows you the effect of this systematic and aggressive distancing. Black women don't want to get married. And it shows because if they wanted to, they would. Now, there's no layer of protection. It doesn't exist anymore. And protection also includes control. And what you see happening with black women is that they're out of control. And what you see now, recently, is that at this point, black men have moved on. Somebody type moved on in the chat room. Black men are no longer interested in marriage or family or community, at least not with black American women. Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. Because they are still interested in marriage, but what they're doing is they're marrying out and they're actually at this point going overseas. Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. But what's going on now is that black women and her behavior are now being studied. They're under a microscope, just like black men have been. But now it's them. And the truth is finding its way into the light and the public is learning the more accurate reasons for the problems that exist in the black community. Social media has finally shown the world the truth. We all have these statistics now that can't be refuted. Those common tropes fail about black men because you got technology showcasing everything. It's harder to hide that behavior. The American black woman is being examined for the first time in history, and there's no spinning it. There's nothing, you, you can't spin it. This is not a positive. And so when I say victimhood is dead, that's what I mean. People are learning these are not victims because they were willing criminals. Shout out to my man, DC. Thank you so much for the $20 cash out. Speaking of which, at the point where you hear something and you learn something, you can go ahead and contribute to the cash app. At some point, I may turn the super chat back on, but shout out to everybody on my main page, but shout out to everybody on the Blizzard King page. If you're on the Blizzard King page, type Blizzard King in the chat room. If you're on the Blizzard King page, type Blizzard King in the chat room. Let me know. All right? Now, let's get back to what I was saying. So the entire world knows that there's a problem, and they see that black men are going their own way. But the problem remains. Now, here's the thing. Some people don't care, but public perception matters. What would need to happen at this point 
What needs to happen immediately? Black women need morally superior women to step up and step to the front and form both an effective coalition and a counter narrative to begin to tamp down this image problem that they have. This horrible image uh, that's been conveyed over the past few years. But see, the problem is there in, isn't enough of those morally superior women to counter this toxic narrative that's being created by these thoughts. Also, the other thing you got to understand is morally superior women, your Coretta Scott Kings, your Betty Shabazzes, they're generally not that loud. They're somewhere married. They're not that argumentative. They don't want to put themselves out there and argue with these thought monsters. Now, some have spoken up. Yet the vast majority have been silent. But see, here's the problem with being silent. Being silent means they're complicit in what's going on. So you got a lot of black women who believe that they're above reproach because reproach, they've never been held to task. So they're not going to listen to these women anyway. They haven't listened to black men. They don't listen to anybody. Y'all remember when Monique uh, tried to gently tell these ladies to stop wearing bonnets in public? You remember that? Y'all remember how that went? They tried to trash her. See, what's happening is black American women are creating a dangerous environment for themselves. But see, the crazy thing is, and the irony is, with the lies and tropes they spread about black men, they created a dangerous environment for us, for black men and black boys. By spewing these hateful narratives about how we're abusive, deadbeat dads, um, violent, it made it very difficult for us and, and to, to, to live in our skin. So, you know, in that regard, you reap what you sow. Now, I wanna talk about how this began to happen. You know why black women hated Kevin Samuel so much? Huh? Because Kevin Samuel was exposed them. See, the effect that Kevin Samuel, somebody type K, KS in the chat room. Somebody type rest in power Kevin Samuels in the chat room. Come on, do that for the Godfather. Come on. Do that for the Godfather. The effect of Kevin Samuels' nightly broadcast was that the world saw the delusion of the modern black woman. See, Kevin loved black people. He loved black women. He wanted to try to rehabilitate them. I would tell him, man, you don't stand a chance in hell. But he turned me into a believer. He was actually making some headway. He loved black people. He wanted to get black men together. And then he wanted to get black women together. Because once he realized, I can make all these blue Henrys, type blue Henry in the chat room. I can get these brothers up to par. I can take these educated lanes and turn them into cool, suave guys, teach them how to dress, teach them the cologne, uh, teach, teach them how to dress. I, I, I can do that. I can take these high value men and I can teach them. But what's going to happen is these men are then going to be immediately ready for marriage. They're going to be suitable for marriage. Somebody type Kevin Samuels in the chat room. Let's get that going. I want the algorithm to read Kevin Samuels right now. Let's do that. Somebody type Blue Henry. Somebody type High Value Man. Let's keep that going, man. In celebration of that good brother. He loved black people. He grew up in Oklahoma. Remember, he was, he was born at the time that you still had that black part of Tulsa. Remember that. Didn't I explain to you guys the other day that the blackity blacks, the pro-blacks would tell you, oh, that Tulsa got burnt up in the riots in uh, 1921. What they won't tell you is at the time they were putting up the Red Cross tents, the black people would come back and they began to rebuild. They did their time during the oppression, but by 20 years later, the black ownership of houses in that part of Tulsa was 46% ownership, and it was higher than the greater parts of Tulsa, which was only 45 for the white folks. So Kevin Samuels grew up in that environment. 
He saw how great black people had been. He knew up close and personal from growing up, growing up in that part of Oklahoma, what the capabilities of black people were. That's what he was. That's why he had just suits on Saturdays and he dressed the way he did and he, he, he moved the way he did. And he always wanted to represent black men well. And he was educating black men on how to, hey, let's get you guys up to par. Let's give these ladies the swag that they want. But see, now I got all these brothers that I've been working with for five and a half years. And all that's going to happen is they're going to skedaddle. Kevin knew about passport bros. I got these black men all ready. And now they're going to run off and go get them some white women and Latina women and Asian women. Kevin told you that the black woman's greatest adversary is not Becky, but Marisol, Mary Soul. Don't you think those Latina women, going these well-dressed, blue-collar men, woo, swooping them up left and right. Toward the end of Kevin's life, you remember that? That was the lady he was going to end up with. But, he, but, but before he gave up on black women, he shifted. Stopped working with black men for the most part. Wouldn't even let us appear on this show. And went straight and pivoted and started dealing with black women. Trying to dispel them of the delusion. Right? Explain to them, ma'am, you don't qualify for a high value man. Ma'am, you don't qualify for a blue Henry. His straightforward approach shed light on the unrealistic expectations and standards of black women regarding their potential partners. You don't qualify for this guy, but there's a nice guy over here you can qualify for. Y'all can get together. Your $40,000 a year, uh, his, uh, uh, your $38,000 a year, his $45,000 a year, and y'all can have a $90,000 household. He helped lower their expectation, and it was working. But in the meantime, in his work, the world saw how black women were overly demanding, materialistic, and unrealistic. Now, black men also saw that, and his work provided a long overdue wake-up call to black men. We saw it. KS tried to warn him, you got to be fit, feminine, and inspirational. But they didn't listen. They just badgered the man. They let Cynthia G and the others uh, harden them to his message. He's a male. He got, he's been divorced. He would know. You listen to this young fool, Derek Jackson, and you see how that turned out. That's who you chose to listen to. And so now winter is here. <laughs> winter is here now. And the Blizzard King is in the realm. I hope you enjoy the scheme. Because unlike Kevin, I don't care what happens to you. I tell the brothers all the time, I'm going to turn the cold shoulder and step over the bodies. I represent a new class of black men. We saw what you did to Kevin Samuels. The only women I'm talking to are the ones that's listening. I don't want you... Doesn't matter. I talk to black men. I want them to be the best they can be. Now, I will say this. Not all black women are bad. And we shouldn't hold black all black women account for, for the bad apples that exist amongst them. Those who are harming the image of black women, they should be brought forth. And they should be brought forth and be forced to face justice. And the innocent black women should be protected. No one's claiming that all black women are like these degenerate ratchet chicks. I'm not trying to put all of them in one box. But you so-called good black women, you should have stopped defending the bad ones a long time ago. Or at least you should have begun to speak out against them very loudly, which you didn't do.
Instead, you sat quietly to see the limits of which these 304s would go. You sat back and watched them go as far as they've gone. And in turn, you reap the benefits of being able to misbehave yourself. Maybe not to the extent of those women who went way out there, OnlyFans accounts. You got only, she got an OnlyFans account, but you were married. Well, I, uh, but I'm gonna have an Instagram account. You shouldn't have either. Entertaining men inboxing you. See, you feel you good girls, you good women feel, well, as long as I didn't go as far as those 304s, then you could argue that their behavior or your behavior it wasn't really that bad. Look what, look what they're doing. So you, you're responsible too, sister. Good woman, you're responsible, just like you make us responsible for the bad apples in our bunch. You're responsible too. <laughs> the question you should be asking, who is protecting black women from black women? Because black women are destroying the image, not just for a certain class of black women, but for all black women. And it's hard to be sympathetic when the behavior is so visible and so widespread. Human beings tend to paint categories of people with broad brushes. And that's going to have an effect on the entire group of black women. Look at how they go now to other countries. And they get their rude awakening. Somebody type sassy trucker in the chat room. Somebody type Brittany Grinner in the chat room. That stank attitude and nasty mouth will not be tolerated, but could land you in jail. It does my heart good to see them get their comeuppance. They deserve this after decades of getting away with literally destroying the black community. They arrested that Dubai chick for raising her voice, something that they do all the time. Brittany Griner decided she was going to seek, sneak her TCH in Russia, something she may have been able to get away with in LA or Atlanta, but not in Moscow. Now, by contrast, black men are traveling all over the world by the millions, having little to no incidents. There's so many black men who have money and resources getting their passports and going elsewhere outside the country. We're seeing everything happen in real time. The world is seeing what so many black men have been saying for years. People now understand why so many black men are leaving Western society, specifically the United States. They're seeing why so many of us have chosen not to have children. Somebody type 54% in the chat room. 54% of black men do not have children and aren't married. Largely because they're not willing to accept a bad deal and they're opting out of the game because the only way to win the game is what? Not to play. See, let me, let me get biblical with y'all for a minute. Black women made an unholy deal with the devil. Somebody type, woman, thou art loose. That's what you prayed for. That's what you wanted. And now it's time for them to pay the devil's due, and he always collects at the most inopportune time. With the economy fading, AI taking over, service jobs being limited, your men have discovered their freedom through passports, the political climate is horrible. Well, you asked to be freed from your so-called oppression of the black man, and now you got it. You made up lies and created false troughs to further your victimhood status with the black man being the primary antagonist, and that's what we got to deal with. Because all these women that I put up here, I want you to look at them. Every last woman that I put up here. 
except one, maybe. Their antagonist was a black man. The black man is the bad guy in all these situations. Whether made up, like this one right here and that one right there, the black man, aside from this one right here, but you know, she don't even like men. Nevertheless, think about that. The black man has had to, to, to uh, endure the consequences of those lies and those false allegations and those tropes. We've seen how you've been moving over the past 50 and 60 years. You're moving foul and wild. You exchange your family for welfare. Put your men out the house so you could have total control over the children. Now society wants to hold black men accountable for what black women have raised. What they raised and put out society. And black men ain't having no parts of that. These women belong to the one who made them. These women belong to the one who empowered them. These women belong to the state. They belong to the federal government. We'll get our own women. Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. Somebody type blue book gentlemen in the chat room. We got options. See, unlike those times in the past, black men are not going to partner up with these lovely ladies anymore. Number one, we don't have to. We have the option of being single. And for some of us, we have the option of going overseas and working remotely and living a life somewhere else. These are options we didn't have before. See, black women achieved victimhood status and they reaped the goodies and prizes from the government. In the meantime, they vilified black men. What you brothers have to realize and what many brothers have realized is that just because we have the same skin color as these intolerable ladies, that does not mean we are obligated to support their degenerate, low-class, ratchet, disrespectful, belligerent behavior. Nor are we obligated to save them from the consequences of their actions. Are y'all listening to me? Brothers, every black man consciously and subconsciously knows that black women don't respect black men. Every black man knows that they're out of control and they've known it for a long time. You've known it since you were a little boy and you saw your mama cut up at the elementary school or the daycare or how she treated her so-called boyfriend, baby daddy, or husband. You know it. Black men actually, black women actually expect black men to submit to them. More importantly, they expect us to submit to their intolerable behavior and authority. But see, here's what's happening with this cultural exchange. Somebody type cultural exchange in the chat room. Did y'all see my broadcast the other night? Black men are learning from other men around the world, but they don't have to tolerate that. Matter of fact, black men who date out right here in the USA are learning that not all women treat you like that. And if those other men don't tolerate it, we shouldn't either. We shouldn't either. You want to know why people don't want to date black women? We know. Now the rest of the world knows. You want to know why they're at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to mate selection and choice? While black men are at the top? It's easy. The world is seeing it now. There's a reason black men are at the top and black women are at the bottom. It's the reason black men have the highest rate of marrying out amongst other all groups of men because we're good men. Somebody type good men in the chat room. Yeah. Somebody type black men are winning in the chat room. 
Come on, let's do it. The star society is starting to listen to Jermaine. They starting to listen to Jermaine's side of the story. It's not always Jermaine's fault. These lovely ladies aren't victims, no matter how many tears they produce. A lot of people had hard lives, but nobody in this country receives more help and handouts and understanding than, than these lovely ladies. Yet the complaints just keep piling up. And here's the other thing. Black women have been so focused on vilifying black men and destroying the black male image, they were completely blind to the fact that they were destroying their own image. These new thought rappers, they were not received very well, were they? Come on, name them. Sukiana, Red Biscuit. Come on, y'all know their names. Come on now. Uh, 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 Trammel Tramp. Well, come on, name their names. You know their names. It all started going hand down after that, didn't it? And it's not going to get any better for it. See, this is not 1990. 1990, we had Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown, Trina. But see, at that time, we also had other images of black women to counteract that 304 imagery. We had nice black women. We had the Cosby Show. We had other images. We had women... You know, upstanding women. Read the, you know, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, Gladys Knight. You know, we had nice looking women, classy women. But at this point, we don't. So that black female thought rapper, that's the most influential representation of black American femininity globally. That's what other people see. That's what they see in America. They don't see any kind of that. Okay, what's a step up from Sukiana? Cardi B? And the cold part about it is black women are the ones pushing the, this, this 304 agenda. So the world is like looking at that like they're tired of it. Name an R&B singer out there that's not on the stage dancing half naked and twerking. Name one. All this pushing of lewd behavior is coming at a time when lewd and degenerate behavior is being rejected. Not only here in America, but around the world. And conservatism and strict theology in the form of Islam is on the rise. How about that? That victimhood card is overplayed when it comes to this hedonistic behavior and debauchery and degeneracy. The straw that broke the back. <laughs> well, hold on. The straw that broke, what, what, do they, what do they call it? The, the broke back mountain straw that broke the camel was the push for the, for the transformer rights and trying to put the alphabet sex education in the school for the children. That's what happened. They overplayed their hand. And now nobody cares about any complaints. People out here working hard, they don't want to hear about anybody's complaints, especially from a group of entitled females who have it easier than most people. Complaining all the time. Now they're receiving the backlash of indifference. The cold part about it is sometimes the backlash is greater than the promotion. Black men, let me tell you something. I told you this before. Stay yourself out of this. Stay the course. Stay the course, because if this is done right, this will change the destiny of the black society here in America. In the meantime, let these women deal with the consequences of their actions. The Lord is working with them. Let me tell you again, the Lord is working with them. I see, I recognize divine chastisement when I see it. This is Lot's wife that we're dealing with. She liked the filth and debauchery, couldn't let it go. You know what happens if you intervene when the Lord is working with somebody, when the Lord is chastising somebody? But that divine chastisement 
can fall upon you. So keep that in mind. That I said, what we saw happen with black women, what we see happen is we saw the reverse roles of victim and perpetrator. See, despite the absence of explicit legal mandates and segregating communities based on race concerning black men and black women, the legacy of discrimination and the ongoing implicit biases ensure that social barriers remain firmly in place as to black people, black men and women. Well, I mean, you know, I'm gonna get to it. Black men and women encounter social isolation, isolation and exclusion. You know how when you go to the little uh, 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 job luncheon, all the black people sit together for the most part, except that one white woman is married to the black dude or that one black dude that's over there timing it up, you know. Yeah. So even in diverse settings, Due to the prevailing stereotypes and unconscious biases, we end up by ourselves anyway. So these biases perpetuate a sense of otherness and hinder genuine integration and in maintaining the invisible walls of segregation. What do I mean, Uncle? They're using all these big ass words. I don't know what happened. We went talking about three old foes, and now you talk about something. What I'm saying is. For the purposes of this conversation, black social interactions between black men and black women aren't well known. That's all I'm saying. So guess what happened? Because people didn't know, for years, black women were able to perpetrate or perpetuate a narrative of victimhood, convincing external onlookers who weren't privy to the culture of black people that they were the targets of relentless injustice and unwarranted attacks, abuse, and discrimination at the hands of the big bad black men. <laughs> this includes their husbands, their fathers, their lovers, their sons running crazy in the street. Hmm? And this story painted black women as helpless victims and the men as cruel aggressors, evoking a surge of sympathy from everybody. <laughs> oh, poor you, girl. Right? That's what Oprah did. All that support for black women. We know the reality and we know it was starkly different than what they portrayed. And see now, as the truth is coming out, coming to the light of day, it's unveiling a complex tale of deception, manipulation, and the reversal of victimhood. That's what you see happening. See, a group of people can create a victim narrative and build a narrative of oppression. Black women excel at crafting and disseminating a compelling story of their suffering and oppression. Anytime you put one in front of a camera, they spoke of their vulnerability and their peaceful nature and their continuous aggression that they had to endure from the big, bad, ape-like King Kong black man, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm telling the truth. And this narrative was shared far and wide by Oprah Winfrey. Uh, who else? Name the rest of them. Oprah, Color Purple. My goodness, man. Tyler Perry, anybody, Steven Spielberg, anybody that good a Negro in front of a camera. And these lovely ladies ate it up. Somebody type Mr. in the chat room. <laughs> Somebody type Mr. in the chat room. And this narrative gained traction and, 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 and evoked strong reaction from external lookers. Why? Oh my God, those black men are horrible. Right? Not just here in America, but communities worldwide. And black women skillfully use this narrative to unify their selves, their siblings, I type sisterhood in the chat room. They, they were able to unify the sisterhood, garner external support, and attain tangible benefits. We, you got to help. We need the education so we can get away from these 
mean, nasty black men. What do they get? Financial aid. They got political intervention. Legal intervention. And most importantly, they got to maintain the moral high ground in any dispute. Any dispute. The cops show up, the black man get arrested because they always see her as having the moral high ground because they didn't already heard about how horrible you black dudes are. And that's just a few advantages they gain from their victim victimhood status. Y'all can lay them out. So in the complex tapestry of human interactions, narratives play a pivotal role in shaping perceptions, beliefs, and responses. That's why your reputation is most important, brothers. Your reputation is something you need to guard just like you guard your man parts. Your balls and your word, right? So this victim narrative is a powerful tool. Telling this story of being an, a victim. It garnered sympathy, support, and resources. So they was able to flip this victim card into a payout. They manipulated these narratives and weaponized them to create an illusion of oppression. Even though reality is starkly different. The black man ain't had no control over the black woman. The white woman said, the black white man is oppressing me. And the black woman said, me too. Like how we, we've had not had any control over black women for the 500 some odd years since we've been here. We don't control the levers of power. We was in it together. Matter of fact, we were covering the black women as best we could, literally with our own bodies. So that was just a big fat lie. What I want to talk about in more detail, so we don't never let this happen again, and so also we so we can have some understanding. I want to discuss the mechanisms of how black women crafted that victim narrative and the strategies employed to build that victim narrative of oppression and the implications of such a, of such a deceptive narrative. The first thing and the most important thing they needed to do is to create the foundation for the victim narrative. And what do you think the most important thing? You got a story. You got the protagonist and the antagonist, right? And the antagonist is what? In the victim story, what is it? Identification of the aggressor. That's a crucial step in crafting the victim narrative, is identifying the external aggressor. This can be a group or an individual. You know how black people say it's the white man's fault. That's how we play the victim narrative. But on an individual basis, right? Individuals portrayed as having power and influence and malicious intent. They wanted to kidnap me on the side of the road when I was trying to save a little white child. And then what they told you? Uh, sassy truck driver. They're just keeping me over here. The patriarch wouldn't even let me voice my opinion. Brick gate. Some black man hit me in the face with a brick and ran off, and none of these other black men did it. That's the case where an individual portrayed not only a, another individual, but also a whole group as having power, influence, and malicious intent over her. Isn't that something? Woo, the game is tight. But see, here's the thing. By establishing a clear adversary, the group or the individual strengthens the credibility of their victimhood because now you got an enemy to look at. When I go to court, the last thing I want is an empty seat. I want somebody there, especially, you know, I want somebody to be there. I don't want to dismiss all the defendants because the defendants that's left is going to say, well, the one that did is is gone. We can't even say his name. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely want all them ugly faces lined up. So who's a convenient ugly face? The black man. 
Now, narratives are also grounded in history, and a victim narrative is no different. You know what they do. Black women, they delve into the history and selectively highlight events and experiences and patterns that support their narrative of oppression. What do they tell you? You know granddaddy had three families across town and he was real abusive to big mama. He cheated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't they, don't they say that? Meet a woman. What do they tell you about their ex-boyfriend? He was abusive. That's what they all say. Right? It's like, oh my God, like that. Look at the history of black folk in the men. When do we have time to do all this abuse during slavery? And while we was building these 160 some odd HBCUs and houses and churches and businesses, when do we have time to abuse all these women? That I mean, I don't understand. Where's the stats? <laughs> my God, how did y'all get so oppressed? My goodness. But they need that historical context. So along with identifying the aggressor, next you got the historical context. It been like this. So it carrying forward into them continue to be abused. Makes sense. Right? My mama was abused. I'm being abused. And I guess my daughter going to be abused. That's like, damn. Come on now. But it's just emotional storytelling. Look. Let me tell you, let me, let me tell you, this is why I'm going to put this picture back up, right? Somebody type brick face in the chat room. Brick face is right here in the middle. A victim narrative relies heavily on emotional appeal. That's what she did. Personal anecdotes, testimonies, and narratives that invoke empathy and outrage. Getting hit in the break in the, with a brick on the side of her face. And now you got a picture up here, but I don't know how you got all that. I don't know. Somebody says assault. Well, I don't know what. Right? But look at that. It makes people have an emotional response. The sympathy is brought to the forefront, so your reason goes away. And all these other women tried it. Jada tried it. We don't care. Gabrielle Union, we don't care. That's what I'm talking about. We are not listening to their stories anymore. Isn't that something? But the whole point of them telling these emotional stories is to create a connection between the audience, right? And it makes the story relatable. It makes you put yourself in the shoes of these people. Or if this was your daughter. But people aren't falling for it anymore. Now, they don't always build the victim narrative or the narrative of oppression fair and square. There's a lot of manipulation of facts. We see that happen. In order to construe a narrative of, of oppression, there's often a deliberate manipulation of fact. They got to lie. And oftentimes that lie is only telling one side of the story. Details that contradict the narrative are omitted. Now, hold on a minute. You say you got hit in the face with a brick but nobody saw you get hit in the face with a brick. Where'd the brick come from? Why'd you have a mask on? Some of this information is omitted. And here's another thing. Some of the facts that do support, it's exaggerated or taken out of context. Well, I had had an accident over in Dubai, and, you know, it wasn't my fault, but I just went in there and kindly asked them in a patient, quiet tone for my things back. Look quiet? You don't even look quiet. Right? They manipulate the facts. The other thing they do is control the information. Somebody say, Carly, why your family won't tell us what you were for that weekend, Carly? You controlling the y'all was got on the internet and told everybody our daughter was trying to find a white boy on the side, a little white baby on the side of the freeway and disappeared.
So where you at now? Why we don't know what, what, what what's the rest of the information? Because if we find out, then we're going to recognize that this narrative of oppression and deceit was all made up. Now, what did the lovely ladies do? What do black, they, they actively suppress dissenting voices. Because see, it's not just an individual thing, it's a group thing. You see, black women manipulate facts. Black men are oppressive. The truth is, y'all, we have is, DV is bi-directional, ladies. Y'all do as much DV to us as we do to y'all. And in the 1970s, I think the late 1970s, it was more y'all uh, unalive and black men and vice versa. Nevertheless, the group, in this case, black women actively suppress dissenting voices and they discredit opposing narratives and limit access to information that could challenge their story. What does that mean? If you don't agree with them, you must be racist. You must be part of the patriarchy. Oh, you, uh, 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 you, you hate women. You hate who hurt you. Somebody type who hurt you in the chat room. And all of this is reinforced in their narrative oppression in the echo chamber, right? One is created where all the supportive voices and perspectives are amplified. And this fosters a sense of community, solidarity, and shared victimhood. Kevin Samuels talked about this a lot. He said a lot of these women are talking about incidents that they've never experienced. Jelly jaw break. They talk about incidents that they've never been through. They just heard it in the echo chamber and then took it out and hit us upside the head with it. What else do they do? We see them do a lot. They leverage media channels and platforms to disseminate their narrative widely. Books, TV shows, music, plays, the news. Black women have been telling these lies about how they've been victims of oppression uh, at the hands of the black men for decades. Not social media, traditional media, co community platform. I was here in Houston. This is about 10, 15 years ago. I was at the Shake uh, Community Center. This black woman stood up and said, there ain't no real men here in Houston. They basically just using any platform you can just to, de just to destroy the reputation of black men. Make us seem like these brutes and savages. I told, I promised myself, if anybody ever says that, anything like that again in public, disparaging black men, I'm going to get up and walk out. Rudely. The other thing they do, by using the media, they attract supporters and they build momentum. This is what they did. This is how they built the narrative of oppression, manipulation of facts, controlling information, creating an echo chamber to reinforce their beliefs and get their talking points together. They utilize media platforms. The other thing they did was mobilize support. They get their narrative together. They mobilize support from external onlookers, sympathetic communities, and other influential in individuals. And this support translates to what? Tangible benefits. Somebody say, show me the money. Huh? But we got to do something about these poor black women. We got to liberate them from these, these, these black men. Let's give them some welfare checks, some EBT cards. We're going to make these black men pay child support out the wazoo. That's what they say. Yep. Yep. And they also get social, validate, the social validation. What does that mean? You go, girl. You're so strong. Grandma ain't did nothing but wait for granddaddy to die. He was the one that paid for that house. But no nobody gonna say that. You did it all by yourself. You did a lot, girl. You birthed three children. You sat, you got pregnant, you pushed out some kids. Granddaddy was out there working in the, in the cotton fields and the coal mine. Whose job is harder? He putting on roofs in eight, 90 degree weather in the middle of Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, New York, Detroit at the plant. See what I'm saying? But she the victim. How'd that even happen? Now, here's the thing. What happens when the public realizes, because this is what we get to, now we're telling the future. What happens, or what are the implications of a manipulated victim narrative? 
In other words, what happens when they're exposed? That's what you see happening right now. And so now we down to the nitty gritty <laughs> in the big city. What happens when these lovely ladies have eroded the trust of the public and they've been exposed? Well, first thing that happened is uh, it undermines people who are really oppressed and who really are victims. That's the first thing. The other thing that's going to start happening is you get the diversion of resources. Manipulated narratives divert resources and attention away from real issues and genuine victims undermining efforts to address systematic issues and deliver justice. That's what happened with this gal. She out there talking about somebody kidnap her on the side of the road. Come to find out she was somewhere doing something with somebody. That's old Carly right there. Hmm? Right? That's what happens. And we see that. But the other thing that happens when you do these things, and I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, what happens to people who are the so-called aggressors? What happened to black men? Hmm? See, behind the facade of oppression and victimization, black women were actually the aggressors. We know that. These men who were raised by black women, they know that. They oftentimes initiate the covert attacks against black men. Your baby daddy, picking on him, messing with him, deliberately provoking him, right? Or deliberately provoking retaliation. But you can't say that. Can't say that. You can't say, oh, yeah, my mama uh, used to uh, provoke my dad. Oh, he should be a man and not respond after she's called him all sort of horrible, nasty names. And then when the men defend themselves, the black women portrayed it as unprovoked violence. And that did what? Repro that, that reinforced the victim narrative. And how did they control that? They controlled it. They, they, why the truth didn't come out? Because they control the information. That's how they, they suppress the dissent. And that's crucial in maintaining the deceptive narrative. You know everything your daddy did, your great-granddaddy did, your, my daddy cheated on me. Well, your mama was cheating too. That's why you don't know and your sister got different daddies, but your one man been paying the bill. You didn't know that, but you can't talk about that, though. See, we can always talk about the man not paying child support, but we can't never talk about the women in this uh, paternity fraud. Because these lovely ladies go a long way to controlling information. That's why so many of them are up in arms when it comes to mandatory paternity tests, because that's a big lie. You know how they got that stuff you can tell if somebody peed in a pool, like it, the pool, the pool water around them turned green? What if you could put something on a woman's VJ to tell if she's been sleeping with some other men? Huh? Or oh, that coochie turned green, girl. <laughs> that coochie green, you've been, you been messing around. I put that coochie, I put that green coochie. It wasn't what it ain't the same color it's supposed to be. Can you imagine? Eh? They'll be up and on. This is sexist. This is going to oppress women. You know what they're going to say? Oh, my God. This is going to endanger women's lives. 
You mean because we got this powder that we throw on you and we'll know if you've been messing around on your husband? Well, what if you just don't mess around? So they got to be able to control that. They got to suppress the sin. They got to maintain the victim narrative. You see? And guess what happens? Shall somebody say good women? Any good woman who's questioned about the official story or advocated uh, uh, for peace or telling the truth, she was ostracized or silenced. So all these good women that might have want to say something, they better not say a damn thing. So they bullied the they bullied the good women into being quiet. But it's still your fault, good ladies. I know why you didn't speak. I wouldn't want them angry heifers. I wouldn't want them beating up me, beating me up either. They ostracized and all that. Yeah, I know. But that's how they kept it in place so long. But it's been exposed now. The exposure of the deception has happened. See, over time, the inconsistencies in black women narrative began to start to emerge and start raising doubts. And uh, people start, you know, doing their own investigations. You got a lot, you got enough brothers out there in these uh in these interracial streets. They tell him. Somebody type, tell it. <laughs> Come on, these brothers out here telling. Somebody say, tell it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> tell it. <laughs> oh man. So now you got other people starting to scrutinize these situations. They're uncovering the evidence on their own, right? There's contradicting what these black women are saying. I work with one, and I'm telling you, she was anything, but she was definitely not a victim. I think Morris, Maurice might be telling the truth about his ex-wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, the thing is, man, black men, we bore the brunt of the tarnished reputation and the false accusations, right? And so it was only right for us to start sharing our story. A lot of you brothers, for years, y'all refused to tell the truth about how horrible some of your mothers were, right? And now you're telling it, right? And it's your right to do that. Yeah. You, and not just your mothers, but your girlfriends, your baby mamas, and so on and so forth. And they, you provided the proof of the provocations from black women and, you know, you might even highlighted your efforts to try to resolve it peacefully. You know what I mean? But at some point, the truth is impossible to ignore. And the world's perception has drastically shifted. That's what's going on right now. That's why none of those women pictured on that thumbnail got any sympathy. Black women is no longer seen as an innocent victim. Instead, they're seen as manipulative and aggressive because their tactics have come to light, which is now tarnishing their reputation. So what's happening now? Now we're dealing with the aftermath. Somebody say Dr. Dre in the chat room. Somebody type aftermath in the chat room. See, the revelation of truth has severe consequences for black women, and you see it happening right now. And that's what these women, that's what I mean. That's where we at, baby. We down in the nitty gritty. We down here, baby. We down here, we, 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 you, you, you weed smokers. We got your last little weed. You got, you chopping the seeds up now. We in the nitty gritty, baby. A lot of black women, you've lost your sympathy and support from all these external onlookers. Becky don't believe you no more. I know them Filipinos don't believe nothing you say. I bet they, I look, them Filipinos don't believe, them Filipinos went hard on these lovely ladies. See, the deception, because y'all jumped on them like y'all jump on us and thought you was going to get the same response. You got that you got that sassy trucker treatment. They locked you down. Your credibility is damaged beyond prepare. Now, guess what's happening? Guess who? You got Becky coming to our side and getting, getting Cynthia G off the YouTube. You got Filipinos and Latinas coming to our side. The black man who was once demonized unjustly 
has received an outpouring of support and sympathy as the real story has unfolded. You understand what I'm saying? These brothers going overseas and now everybody, oh, that's what you was dealing with. Damn, remember, we've been a, a socially isolated group of people. Even though segregation ended, we still be off by ourselves. Know what I'm saying? Now, what's going to happen with black women? Let me, get, let me tell you what's happening now. Shout out to the Crimson Cure. Shout out to all these black women who are now speaking up. Somebody type, uh, what do they call them ladies? Uh, pick me. Somebody type pick me in the chat room. See, what's happening inside black women's group, right? Amongst a lot of black, it, it, it's it, the exposure of deception has led to a crisis identity and trust. See, generations of black women have been raised on that false narrative about how bad the black man is and they're these innocent and so forth. And now they actually feel betrayed and disillusioned. The unity that that deception had fostered is disintegrating before your eyes. And it's leaving the community divided and in disarray. That's why you got so many of these black women who are red pill types. You understand what I'm saying? You see, now they like, there's no unity. This wouldn't happen 10 years ago. But this is what's happening. The revelation of truth in the scenario involving black women that have falsely claimed this victimhood status brought about a profound and multifaceted set of consequences. See that intricate fabric of their deception now that this unraveling is leading to drastic, a drastic shift in public perception. And it's going to have lasting implications on the community. When I say community, I'm talking about black women because the brothers ain't there no more. Their relationships with external entities and a broader narrative of gender-based conflict. Y'all would have voted for Kamala Harris 20 years ago, but half of y'all don't even like black women. Y'all would have felt sorry for Gabrielle Union 10 years ago, but y'all don't care. If Ike Turner has shot uh, 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 Tina, uh, Tina Turner in the foot in the 1980s, we'll still be talking bad about him. But y'all barely believe Megan Thee Stallion. You know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you the truth. Because you don't believe him no more. I said no more. Speaking of that's Ebonics for never again. <laughs> Not anymore. All right. That's what you see happening. So you see black women suffering in this, as far as there, there's a loss of sympathy and support. Not just for the bad ones that's been misbehaving, but all of them. And this is what I meant when I said earlier, they creating a dangerous environment for black women. See, black women have previously enjoyed a groundswell of sympathy and support from external lookers, including international communities, human rights, organizations, uh, otherwise sympathetic individuals and companies where they gave them $10 billion or something for individual <laughs> black business, all that sympathy because they've been playing that victim narrative. Don't let them fool you. They know what they're doing. It's profitable. However, the truth is now coming to light. It's all on social media. And you see the support rapidly dissipating. Go try to get a set aside for a black woman uh, business. You're going to get sued by that white man. Right? And so now what's happening, I'm telling you, look, look, man, you're going to look back at this in four years, you'll be like, damn, Uncle D was on some shit. He, what kind of weed was he smoking? I don't smoke, but I'm just saying. Must have like a, 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 a damn crystal ball over there. I'm telling you, man, this is society. You see it happen. History doesn't repeat itself, but it has echoes. You can see it happen. You're going to see black women start to be left isolated. Former allies, that white woman, that Latina woman, that Asian woman, they're going to start withdrawing support from them. Because they feel betrayed and misled by black women. 
the resources and financial aid and diplomatic backing and political backing that black women wants, but that flow to them generously. It's going to be cut off. You see it happening. You see it happening before your eyes. So now black women are going to have to now deal with the loss of external support. But it's also the loss of crucial uh, 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 resources. Look at how many black women are being uh, evicted from their apartments and houses and whatnot. They got the highest rate of eviction. You can't get a welfare check these days. They can barely get a job. They're dealing with irreparable damage to their credibility at this point. The credibility of black women is shattered and it's getting worse. Why? Because their victim narrative and their narrative of oppression has been exposed. Not by us, but by them. Look at their behaving on the internet. They saw what Cynthia G did. You look at them white folks and what they said at that, at that ARS Technica uh, vibe. They call her all sorts of names, knowing she was a black woman. They don't see her as a victim. All of these women that's on the thumbnail, they can't be, they, they not be able to see you as victims no more. You're not garnering any sympathy. The victim narrative no longer works for black women. You messed it up. And see, here's the thing. Trust, once broken, it's incredibly difficult to rebuild. Now, any future narratives and pleas that they may have, now is going to be met with skepticism. That's why Brickface, when she got hit with a brick, y'all ain't really believe her. Because people see the previous deception and that cast a long shadow over the words of black women. Shout out to everybody who contributed to the cash app. But I, I got I to gotta get this, man. Big shout out to my man, Tika <laughs> Salty. Baba, read that a minute, baby. That's always good. All right. Are you seeing what I'm, are y'all seeing? Not seeing. I was going to say, you seeing what I'm saying, but I, anyway, y'all, you get it. And see, now uh, we're talking about the, your credibility, your reputation. So now there are future, future attempts by black women to address real issues that they really have, like cystic fibrosis and other diseases that are germane. That, all that is going to be hindered because their credibility has been fundamentally comp compromised. You see? Even when they represent truthful accounts, they're going to be faced with an uphill battle trying to convince external onlookers of the validity of their claim. Some of these women on this internet, uh, on this uh, thumbnail, actually were telling the truth to a certain extent. But y'all didn't really believe them. So what does that say? That says a lot. That says that credibility is shot. Now, what are the consequences that black men are going to face? Y'all with me? Y'all want to hear this? This is important, too. The consequences that black men are going to face. Right? Well, there's going to be a shift in sympathy and support, and you see it happening now. Black men are experiencing a surge of support. As the real story of what we've had to endure it's going around the world. The international community, pol politicals, human rights organizations, whatever, and the public at large. They quickly express their solidarity. Man, yeah, man, I was, they're like, yeah, we've seen, we know how those women are, right? They recognize the injustice that we've suffered. Our children being taken away from us. All that we've had to go through, they see it. That's why black men are not really having a problem when they're traveling overseas. We got more black men in college than we do in prison. Overrepresented in the military. Our incarceration rate is down significantly from the 1990s. 
63% of black, black men have reached the middle class by the time they hit middle age. Why? Because you got a, a lot of external entities trying to recidify the wrongs that have been perpetrated against black men. We're getting a restoration of our reputation because the revelation of the truth has allowed black men to begin the slow process of restoring our tarnished reputation. Shout out to young brothers on this internet, man. Like who? Media man with the stats. Kevin Samuels with the stats. All these other brothers with the stats doing that good work. Hitting them over the head with these facts. See, what we're learning is that unjust demonization that we had to endure is now being publicly acknowledged. And efforts are being made to correct that narrative. That's why you got that brother, that's why that, that, that law passed up there in Tennessee. Got them men paying for children that's not theirs. Now it's mandatory. You got to have a DNA test. 50-50 custody down in Florida. Not just black men, all black men, but still. Not all men are having to deal with, but black men in particular. Now the full restoration of our reputation that's going to require time, and it's going to require a consistent demonstration of our true character. And we shining through, baby. Hand clap for the brothers. We raising our kids. We putting positive images out there of who we are. I do my very best on my own page all the time. You see me with my children. You see me support my little brother. You see me being a good man, a good father. You see me. And I see you, brothers. That's part of what we're doing. Now, another thing you got to understand is that there's going to be some broader implications. There's going to be an impact on gender-based narratives all the way out. See? Gender-based conflict and victimhood? Mm-hmm. This whole incident that black men have had to endure with our reputation, it serves as a stark reminder of the importance of critical evaluation, unbiased investigation, and the necessity of hearing all sides of the story before passing judgment. They weren't trying to listen to us. We were trying to tell our story in rap music. Oprah Winfrey said, I don't listen to that. Remember that? Oprah didn't listen. She wasn't hearing nothing we were trying to say. Somebody type Me Too backlash in the chat room. You got all these female advocacy groups and DV groups. They're going to find themselves at a crossroads because they got to reaffirm their commitment, not just to one sex or the other, but the truth and justice. But then they also got to be able to support genuine victims of injustice. So how do they do that? You got that. All these women been lying. They've been lying? Look at you. Keisha, you've been telling me for the past 10 years that, that, that Leroy been doing all this stuff to you. Come to find out, you the one that's been cutting up. And he was telling the truth. How do I know? I saw the videotape. He filmed you doing what you was doing. And you ain't the only one. See? Now what's going to happen? People don't like to be fooled. So that's going to ignite the cause for accountability. There's always a need to put what went wrong right, especially to prevent these manipulations from happening again. You got a whole group of men that have been lied on by a whole group of women for decades.
but they won't be fooled again. They they were susceptible to compelling narratives and, you know, and they helped these lovely ladies. And in helping these lovely ladies, it just fed them to keep beating us up more. So they part, so the external entities, politics, cops, whoever, they're responsible too. And as a result of this, look, let me tell you something. Black women, you got a reckoning. Your day of reckoning is coming, and it's going to be profound. You're going to face isolation socially, a loss of resources, irrevocable damage to your credibility. Conversely, black men are going to experience a restoration of our reputation and an influx of support and a welcoming from the community. That's what you see happening. That's why when we go overseas, we're good, and when you, it ain't good. That's why black men can get in clubs and they don't let that many black women in. They'll let a black man in with a whole bunch of white girls and women from other ethnicities, but they will not let a whole bunch of black women in their club. Go try it. You've been isolated because they know how you are. You can't play the victim. Tell me, tell me I'm not. Tell me I'm lying. Go take your butt up to, to, to New York somewhere and try to party. And you see what we're doing here on, on in Black YouTube. Our stories and our discussion is serving as a catalyst for broader discourse, discussions and accountability. And the complexities of gender-based narratives. It ain't all just one way. And also the responsibility of external onlookers to seek the truth diligently before extending support. It's been a lot of little black boys that would have liked to be raised by their daddy. But because their mama lied so bad, nobody was willing to help that man get his child. See, our story as black men, it, it serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of deception and the importance of seeking the truth and justice irrespective of the gender. Stop bestowing upon these women all these lofty traits that they don't deserve. Sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what little girls are made of. Hell they are. They made of worms and shells and puppy dog tails as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just jumping to it, you, you know, this highlights the need for critical thinking and unbiased investigation and the courage to question dominant narratives. I tell judges all the time, if you start putting more of these women in jail in these DV events, it'll cut back. Well, what do you mean? The women will be afraid. No, look at the, look at the lesbian DV rate. They got a higher DV rate than anybody else. Guess who got the lowest? Two dudes. Two dudes are less violent than two women together. So what does that tell you? That tells you women are more violent. They might not be able to cause as much harm with that violence, but they damn sure more violent. A fool can tell that. And that's what I tell these judges before I give them some money. Look. <laughs> I don't want to hear about no biasness. I want fair-minded judges. Now, I give you a little thousand dollars and you do good, I give you some more next time. But as far as black women, in the end, the deceit, playing that victim role in the 1960s, getting that white man's crumbs, that brought them some temporary gains. But it resulted in lasting damage to their community, their reputation, the internal harmony. The men don't want them. The men are leaving. The men are not marrying them. The community is looking at them sideways. Again, that white woman can go back to her man because she never abandoned her man. No matter how hard they tried to hide it, the truth always finds its way out. It's that story, you know, the boy that cried wolf. That's what's happening. 
It's just like that boy that cried wolf, but here you got that girl that cried abuse and victimhood. And she was eventually eaten by the wolf, just like he was eaten by the wolf. But if we expand upon that moral, that moral, that moral uh, the, the, of that story, it underscores several important ethical points. When an individual repeatedly lies or deceives others, trust is eroded. And trust is fund a fundamental component of healthy relationships and communities. And once it's lost, it's difficult to get back. In that story, the boy repeatedly lied to the other villagers to question, you know, they questioned his reliability. And when he finally told the truth, it was too late. The damage had been done. A lot of you black ladies, you just a dangerous environment for you because people don't believe you. That story highlights the importance of being accountable for your actions. Accountability. Woman kryptonite. You got to be accountable for your actions. And you got to be accountable in, in, in the, res the responsibility that comes with certain roles. In that instance with the boy who cried wolf, the boy had the duty to protect the flock but he, 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 and, and be truthful in his communication with the other villagers. And his failure to fulfill his duty had a serious repercussions, not just for him, but for the entire community. It's consequences for deception. And see, deceit can lead to unintended tragic outcomes. Sisters, I need you to understand something. The good ones, the bad ones, and all of them in between. You're going to be ostracized from the community. You are now without your man. There's brothers that won't even speak to you when they're walking down the street. That's terrible. You found amusement in the deception. But at the end of the day, you got to pay the ultimate price because you're going to be replaced. You're being replaced, sister. See, that short-term gain has led to long-term consequences. You are being replaced by Latinas, women of the other women of the African diaspora, white women, Asian women, and there's nothing Umar Johnson can do about it. How about that? Him, my boy's whacked. There's nothing they can do about it. That's the value of honesty. If you were just stuck with your man, if you were just stuck with your man, In the 1960s, we would have had three black presidents by now, some real ones, but you didn't. Kudos to you black men. You, 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 kudos, this is a story of champions and the virtue of honesty, because throughout all of that, you never lied on black women. You never did. You never did to them what they did to you. You always spoke the truth. Most of y'all remain quiet. See, being truthful and transparent builds trust and it fosters healthy relationships and it creates a strong foundation for communities. So you brothers can go on. You're going to get picked up. It's going to be a lot of women that want to marry you men that want to get married. It's going to be. It's there for you, baby. You are some of the best men on the planet. Black men are some of the most egalitarian men on the planet, easy to get along with, loving, great fathers. 2015 CDC report said black men are the most involved fathers of any other group. That's who you are. Take us out of these harsh environments and the murder rate and the criminal rate go down. Hell, get what it do. Woo, here's a good one. There's a report out that says white women raise black boys better than black women. Why do you think that is? Number one, because they're less violent and they're not as deceitful, are they? Especially about who you are as a black man. Your white mama is not going to be around here telling you you ain't nothing, you a little nat. They, 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 you get that from our, our, your own mama, man. Ooh. 
that same vitriol she has for black men, that same false narrative, she fills these little black boys' heads up with them. And you wonder why they grow up and hate themselves and hate the other black men that look like them. That's why they're so quick to kill them. All to maintain a lie because you wanted the white man's crumbs. You wanted his EBT card. You wanted his affirmative action. His section eight. Nevertheless, brothers, you gotta counter the false victim narratives by either individuals or groups. You gotta be ready, because this, this is not the first and the last time. There are going to be instances with individuals and groups, because it might happen at your job. Where individuals fabricate or exaggerate claims of victimization to manipulate the public opinion, gain sympathy, or tarnish your reputation or others. Addressing these issues requires a comprehensive approach. It involves, number one, critical thinking, effective communication, and fostering the culture of accountability and transparency. You got to always make the public aware of who you are. No, no, all that strong silence got to end. Speak up for yourself. You got to keep uncovering these deceptions and holding these perpetrators, these lovely ladies, somebody type lovely ladies in the chat room. Got to hold them accountable. Can't be afraid to do that. Use the technology. Shout out to Dr. Tia Son Johnson. Shout out to the Green Gorilla. These brilliant educated men who come on here on a regular basis and use this technology to do what? As tools that can quickly verify information and cross-reference stories, and check the credibility of the sources, which has played a critical role in debunking these false narratives that have been spread by these lovely ladies. And what is that doing? It's helping curb the spread and ensuring that misinformation about us is being nipped in the bud. I got three sons that I love. And the last thing I want to do is have them have to deal with all this negativity about who we are, this misinformation that largely spread by these lovely ladies. Now look, we need to amplify authentic voices. If there are women who are victimized and truly victimized by these jerks, we need to make sure we give them a space to speak. And we'll contrast the false victims with the real victims, the genuine victims. That's how we show our integrity. And when we help them. But we need to engage directly with these false victim narratives. And we need to provide evidence, just like we did with Brick Face. Somebody type Brick Face in the chat room. We need to debunk all these false narratives. And we need to encourage open dialogue so we can help dismantle all these de deceptive claims. It's a lot of y'all. It's still women in y'all family swearing up and down that somebody's daddy did something to somebody or somebody's granddaddy did something to somebody. And that's a bold, fla bold face lie. Grandma had you believing that granddaddy was cheating on me when she was the one cheating and some of them kids that he had ain't her, they his. And you need to begin to debunk that for the dead and the living. Don't let them sit up and talk bad about your dead ancestors, the men that came before you. I don't care if they've been gone, I don't care how long they've been gone. And the living. Your knee-jerk reaction when you hear these bad things come out about black men is to say, hold on, I need more facts. Hold on, 
I want to hear his side of the story. Hold on, I need to see some evidence before you just get to getting me to blame uh, a black. How many black men's lives would have been saved had that girl down there in uh, 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 Florida who got mad at her ex-boyfriend if, if, if instead of going over to that man's house and getting shot up, they said, hold on, what, what, what did you do? Somebody say, what did you do? Your daughter come up to you and say, my boyfriend hit me. Hold on, uh, uh, Keisha, what did you do? What did you do? Instead of you jumping in your truck or your, your SUV, or your Ford Taurus with your pistol in hand to go confront some boy at his house about what your trifling daughter said he did to her because you want to prove your manhood, because you want approval from the sisterhood, because you've been told not to question them. What did you do? See, we need to foster these ethical values. Promoting the culture that values honesty, integrity, and accountability. And create that creates an environment where false victim narratives are like are less likely to thrive. How many black boys have been put in prison because some woman lied about R-A-P-E? Y'all know a couple of famous ones right now. Pac, Tyson. It's a lot of men locked down for years behind these false allegations. And then the woman come out, oh, I lied. We need to begin to reward women who uphold the truth and have integrity. Even in challenging situations, they're willing to set a positive example and encourage others to do the same. Somebody type pick me in the chat room. Shout out to all the pick me's in the chat room. Those are the women we need to support. Anyway, I think I've done a great job tonight. If you think I've done a great job tonight, make sure you pay me for my time. If you've learned something tonight, pay me for my time. The Cash App is right there. If you've learned something tonight, hit me up on the Super Chat. If you've been intrigued, if I like open your mind up to some avenue that you hadn't thought about before, pay me for my time. That's the best way you can show your appreciation, respect. Also, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. Hell, if you have hit the subscribe button, hit it again. Nevertheless, take this opportunity to help me get another 10 cash apps. That's what I'm looking for. And in the meantime, y'all listen to this music that I got playing. Boom. You understand what I'm saying? Hate me all you want to, baby. I don't mind hating me. Hate Hate all you can. Let me go the other way. Hate, hate, hate all you can. Hate, hate everything. But I'm going to still make you look good. Black men winning. Okay? Come on. Somebody type that in the chat room. Black men winning. Okay? Because that's just what's happening. We are winning. We win it. Uh, uh, we win it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We win it. We win it. We win it. I know they hating out here. Yeah. I know they mad, they all in their feelings, but baby I don't care, she calling the police on me and everything, yeah, somebody need to get on the phone, call my attorney, Turn it. dealing with these hard-headed hoes who ain't learning, Learn it. acting all ignorant like a motherfucking menace, she better bundle up cause bitch is about to be winner, niggas acting timid, why you think she treat a nigga so bad, turn her only fucking son into a killer, can't even distinguish who the women, who the bitches. Yeah. She broke my nigga, even Jesus can't fix it. Now my whole nigga got a man up in prison. But quick to tell you, get your bag up, bitch, quit it. Ever heard of Dennis? Yes, sir. Get you spurling. We in court early, early. Don't be acting all girly. Keep that same energy. Don't need any men. You the man. You the
the father, you the face of many men, yep, many ripple ten, taking L's your whole life, while the passport pros taking off the next flight, some thick, sudden feminine, rubbing on my shoulders, be a cold day in hell, Blizzard King try to tell you, a new world is coming, bitch, you better stop sinning, she got took Kevin, left your sorry ass with Dennis. Somebody type old broad in the chat room, talking about men, you can't find them. That just mean you had your chance, boo. You had your chance. And your chance has passed you by. Your husband done went on to the great beyond. Ha! Ah, he's not there looking for you no more. Ha! Ah, you done hit one wall. Ha! Ah, ha! Ha! Somebody type one wall in the chat room. Ha! Ah, you done hit two walls. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Somebody say three walls. Yeah! The reason the bad guy is the bad guy is because he says no when people try to shame him, when they try to invoke, invoke morality. No, I'm not going to lower my standards. No, I'm not going to clean up this mess that is the black community. No, I don't have time uh, to spend my life trying to rehabilitate a woman who's been in the streets. Why? Because she's not worth it. No. I'm not going to do it because my purpose on this earth is not to rehabilitate a woman. My purpose on this earth is to figure out what the most high wants me to do and begin to do that. And then when a helpmate comes along, I will accept her help, a helpmate, not a patient. The most high said he'll send you what? A helpmate, not a patient. It's not your job to psychoanalyze these broads and get them healed up and help raise their bastard kids will be a drain on your resources and prevent you from doing what you supposed to be doing. That's not your job. Back in America, she run a mouth. A lot of you niggas are scared of KK Keisha. Call the police up, never tell you about that threesome. Thinking she decent. Went in the house, room started smelling like feces. Bad bitch, but she nasty. Bitch, you a heathen. You don't need marriage, just lease it. Travel for keepers. We don't do creepers. We don't do no shaniquas. You gotta keep up. Bitches are bad, bad. And y'all ain't competing. BBLs, American hoes be cheating. Up in Thailand, we be cheap. And out in Brazil, get that treatment. No, you hate it. That's why you be speaking. We travel the first of the weekend. That's the weekend. Why we spend Dominican chicks with a body like Cardi Your face like a Mari, no beefing She keep it high up Yeah, we stuck She hit that high No, baby, we up We travel the first of the weekend At the weekend Why we spend Dominican chicks with a body like Cardi Your face like a Mari, no beefing She keep it high up Yeah, we stuck She hit that high No, baby, we up I'm leaving out tonight You can keep that Ho, ho, no Talking like we ain't got no broke hoes Baby daddy drama trash ho, oh no You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport bro, bro, ho, ho You fucking with a passport Is there <laughs> traveling overseas? Shout out to all the passport bros Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. If you listen to women, especially black women, they'll tell you exactly what their intentions are. They're not mad at Joe Blow off the street who got a white woman who's broke but they mad at hell at Kobe Bryant and he's been dead for years now they mad at Tay Diggs mad at Jamie Foxx they mad at Terrell Owens and all the rest of the rich men but why? I did date some black girls when I was in college they did not like me I was skinny, right. I was strong right. I, was, I was teased from high school even college why? I got teased for being dark skinned Damn, so they, they, they tease you, cuz? Yeah. Blizzard King. Ah. Yeah. We on something else. It's cold outside, baby. You gotta bundle up out here. Yeah. Policing black men as a way of having men with resources remain available, thereby doing the bidding 
for these lovely ladies. Got a lot of niggas is out here trying to peep shit. Dick watching, always concerned about who you sleep with. Locker room gazing, single mamas made him. Mad cause he thirsty hood bitches that played him. Cotton picker, all about self, he's a rotten nigga. He hit below the belt, he's a box licker. Take a picture, post it up, he's a mock nigga. Deputized, law enforcement, he's a cop nigga. Whoop, 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 pull over. Behind you so close, like he wanna get up on me. We don't play with niggas, so when we get your head to him, we will slay a nigga. That gossip out the bedroom, we are not concerned. By who you touching, let's get that Gotta earn, like fuck who you fucking, so let's miss that Blizzard King, blowing through your comments Frigid, colder than a motherfucking glacier Blizzard. Don't let that man pump you up, daddy, and get your ass shot out here We ain't no damn top flight security of the world You heard what happened to the last security guards Bingo, I got action That's the sound of the bees Passport dick police While we flying overseas you can keep whoop, whoop, That's the sound of the beast whoop, whoop, Passport the police whoop, whoop, While we flying overseas whoop, whoop, Kick a key so you can keep Crooked officer, crooked officer Tell these riding hoes get up off of us They just wanna see me in a car officer Go and get your daddy get up off of us Crooked officer, crooked officer We chillin' overseas, yeah we bossin' up Tell me what I need to get your offers up Don't nobody want you, gotta cough it up, yeah it's cold outside, Blizzard King coming. Blizzard King coming. It's cold outside, Blizzard King coming. Blizzard King coming. It's cold outside, Blizzard King coming. Blizzard King coming. It's cold outside, Blizzard King coming. King coming. The truth gotta hurt for all my lovely ladies. And your love was fading for our blackmail babies. You abort me. Take me to court. Yeah, trying to extort me. You the want my protection? Slave. Give me a court fee. A runaway slave. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Uh. When the buzzer pop, nigga, you stop. We don't give a damn about who you are. Let your little ass take one more step. We'll bury your ass in them fake ass iguana shoes you wearing. That's the sound of the beast. Whoop, whoop. Passport dick police. Whoop, whoop. While we flying overseas. Whoop, whoop. Kick that key so you can keep. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the beast. Whoop, whoop. Passport dick police. Whoop, whoop. While we flying overseas. Whoop, whoop. Kick that key so you can keep. <laughs> damn, man, girl, you done blew up my damn. Super Sonic, you, you, you hide something back there in your cargo area, ain't you, that guy? Look like you're smuggling two beach balls in your cargo area, that guy. Crooked officer, crooked officer. Tell his right nose, get a ball for us. Wanna they just want to see me in a car for some. Go and get your daddy, get a ball for us. Crooked officer, crooked officer. We chilling overseas, yeah, we bossing up. Tell me what I need to get your offers up. Don't nobody want you, got a car fit up, yeah. Now let me tell you what this is really about, fellas, and I want you to do somebody type follow the money in the chat room. Somebody type follow the money in the chat room. This dick policing is about money. They, i.e. the lovely ladies and the pro-black simps that do their bidding, want you to pay off with black women so that they can control you through her. Go to black church, black events, subject to black social uh, circles. She controls you. And your resources. What did I tell you about women? Women want to control themselves and their body. And they want to control you and your body and your resources. That's biologically what women were designed to do. All right. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm going to take this opportunity to give a big shout out to everybody who came through with the super chat, man. Uh, so uh, my man, uh, MC Recovery, said, bro, D putting in work. I need 180 YouTube hours. Man, my baby mama been <laughs> nice now. <laughs> Told my stepdad I, I want to ring. He said, daughter-in-law, he met. Oh, that's cool, man. Good to hear that, man. As long as she bringing peace of mind and happiness, man. Don't, you know, don't fall for it. There's some tough times out there on these lovely ladies, man. They they, they trying to come in there. They want to end these negotiations. It's been hard on them. Uh, who else we got? We got my man Black. And Gold Emperor's 40. Shout out to you, said Uncle D, the Blizzard King. You dropping diamonds. Hashtag black men winning. Somebody type hashtag black men winning in the chat room. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Iceberg slip. If it ain't foreign, it ain't born. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, here. 
<laughs> anyway, man, shout out to you, man, my man, Rock One. Leave him alone. Yeah, that's what it's up to. Leave him alone. There you go, baby. Good job. Shout out to you, Rock One. My man, Broken Blade. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. Winston Churchill. Praise Moses. Hallelujah. Somebody type praise Moses in the chat room. And that's what we had tonight. A truthful conversation. Hallelujah. 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 Salty Balls says, For thine she heathen hath been smited into silence, cast it out, rebuked and reclosed, aired out, yet, uh, yet, yet out of breath as thine descendant into the void of the great depths. As natural law and order is the universal and divine and sovereign speed limit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Deacon Salty Balls, we missed that great passage uh, uh, play that you often bring through. Good to have you back. Praise Moses. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise Moses in the chat. <laughs> My man, David Dice, the Uncle D, apologize for the lady. Baby, you ride on time for the replay. Don't trip. Welcome to the progress. And thank you so much for the, for the cash out. Um, who else we got? Iceberg Slim. What do you think about Shahrazad Ali? I think the sister was uh, speaking the truth back in the 1990s. And... Uh, she definitely, uh, you know, was rebuked for speaking that truth. She was the first pick me, and they didn't like her then, and many of them don't like her now because she's speaking the truth. But, uh, yeah, that's what I think. Uh, Jamal Smith, thank you so much. Shout out to the Blizzard King and the Ice Lords and the winter has arrived. It sure has. Now, we're a little short on the cash apps today. That's all right, though. I know y'all ain't got y'all check yet. Don't worry about it, baby. Just hit me up. Maybe y'all catch me on the replay. But uh, anyway, I want to give a big shout out to everybody who contributed con uh, contributed to the cash app. I don't um, read their last names because, you know, these are people's private information. So I might either read the first name or the last name. But I want to give a big shout out to these guys. Shout out to Mr. Hennigan. Thank you so much for the cash app. Shout out to Mr. Randy. Thank you so much. Uh, and this is, you know, if you guys feel like you learned something tonight, that's when you contribute to the cash app. But you could do it anytime during the broadcast. But. I want you, I'm earning my money. You see what I'm saying? I'm treating this just like any other service that I'm provided. And that's why we do a little entertainment, a little comedy, but this is real life stuff. You know, this is stuff you can actually use and have a better understanding of the world. And so that's why I do this. Uh, and so, you know, and if you feel I've earned my keep, if you feel that uh, you've learned something, then you can pay me for my time. And that's why the people who are on here do that. Uh, so, you know, the cash app, super chat and, you know, that's why I do that. But big shout out to you, Randy. Thank you so much for the cash app. Uh, Timothy, uh, oh, my man, Mr. Hennigan, Mr. Darnell, Mr. D'Angelo. Thank you so much. Lamont, I like, I got an homeboy named Lamont. Everybody I know named Lamont can fight real good. That's one thing I know. Anybody named Lamont, they can fight real good. You better leave Lamont alone. Anyway, shout out to my man, Larry, Darnell, Jerome, Mark, the freelancer, my man, Ron. Jay Rock, <laughs> 4690. Thank you so much for the cash out. Uh, let me see. We got Obajai, Obajai. I hope I hope Obajai, Obajai. Thank you so much, Mr. Cordell. Cash Trade 43 TX and DC. And we had some people who came through early. Keith Sykes, big shout out to you, Mr. Wash, Mr. Wilson. All you folks who came, all you brothers who came through, man. Big shout out to y'all. Look, man, I think this is a classic. I think it stands on its own. I really don't think we need to. Uh, Bring anybody in. It's a lot to talk about. I look forward to reading the comments section, man. Y'all make sure, uh, you know, if you haven't hit the like button by now, we we deep up in here. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm only a few few points away from the back next big next big milestone here on YouTube. But uh, look, man, I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. We talked about a very complicated subject tonight. I did my best to break it down within two hours. I was able to stay within two dollars. A lot more nuance, a lot more things we could talk about. But y'all get the general picture. The victim narrative no longer works for black women. Why? Because they've been exposed through their own selves. Nothing we did. They put themselves on YouTube and the Internet. They broadcast themselves. What they were saying wasn't matching with what they was doing. And now the whole world sees it for what it is. And I gave you a play by play of what happened and what this is going to lead to. And really, fellas, there's really nothing you can do about it. For you good ladies, let me make, let me, let me give a little strand of hope for you good women. Hold on, let me take a little jelly. Give me a minute. Give me my jelly jars. Hold on. 
there's one single strand of hope for the good women who don't want to be thrown in with the bad ones. And that is you got to separate yourself from these no good women. Don't dress like them. Don't act like them. Don't go where they go. You might need to cover up with a hajib. Because otherwise, you're going to get treated just like these 304. That's what's going to happen. That's your only help. And see, let me say this, and now I'm going in overtime. Black men had to deal with what happens when the reputation, when your reputation goes down the toilet. We went from pro-black to crack pipe. We went from black empowerment to gang banging. A black man walking down the street could get hemmed up by the police because our reputation went down the toilet, largely because of what you ladies did. The, 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 the grave that you dug for us, ladies, you should have been digging one right next to it for yourselves because the one you meant for us, now you got to hop in it. You're going to have to deal with the consequences of your reputation now. Yours is based on what these people are seeing you doing and how you talking. Black men don't have the reputation that you all have. We have the reputation of being easy to get along with and manageable and egalitarian. That's why these women around these countries will pick us up. So you ladies who don't want to get caught up with these other black American women, you got to separate yourself openly and verbally. You got to train your daughters to be ladies, be classy. Don't speak like them. Don't talk like them. Don't dress like them. Hell, don't eat what they eat. Don't dress. Don't, 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 don't live like them. You literally got to separate yourself. Because otherwise you're going to get caught up in the wash. You're going to be ostracized like the rest of these black women. That's your only hope. That's what many, you're going to get ridiculed for it. Just like many of our so-called educated lame brothers, our nerdy black brothers, they didn't want to do all that hood stuff. They got ridiculed for it. They got socially ostracized for it. But they survived for the most part. That's your only hope, ladies, because this victim narrative is backfired. Not only does it no longer work for black women, but there's going to be retribution. Otherwise, something bad happened to you, nobody cares. You in your dorm room, your daughter's in her dorm room. Somebody said, or you say somebody did something to you, they're not going to even believe you. They're going to automatically assume you're the victim. You're, you're the criminal as opposed to the victim. When the police pull you over, they're going to put you in hand because you're going to get treated like black men have been getting treated, ladies. And I don't think y'all ready for that. I truly don't think you can deal with, I don't think any other group of people can deal with what black men have been dealing with. We talk about what these Palestinians are having to deal with over in the Gaza Strip. I dealt with that in South Central LA, isolated. Police force always coming in, hemming you up. They dealt with that in Harlem back in uh, during the uh, Giuliani years. We know what it's like. We know just what those Palestinians are dealing with or what they've been dealing with. That don't justify what they did. I don't support that at all. But bottom line is we know what it's like to be in a police state. We know what it's like to be a people under siege. And back black men bore the brunt of that. And now black women, you're not going to reap the benefit of your, femi your, your female perception. You're not going to reap, reap the benefit of the, your womanhood. They're going to see you as the perpetrator. And that's what you got to deal with. Unless you separate yourself through extreme measures, that's the consequences. But, uh, you know, chickens coming home to roost. Never heard old, never offended old country boy. Right? And that's what Brother Malcolm said. Ladies, this is the bed you laid. You good ladies, you sat back, you let it happen. You didn't chastise these women. You were quiet. You... So you're going to have to go down with them. That's unfortunate. Well, in the meantime, these brothers are not going to save you because, you know, this is your bed. This is your burden to bear. Other than that, man, this is Uncle D. I love you guys. Shout out to everybody who came through. Shout out to everybody who contributed to the Super Chat, the Cash App. And, uh, you know, 
appreciate y'all. Big shout out to my man MC Recovery came through at the last minute. And also, who else we got who came through at the last minute? Thank you, Venom. I appreciate that. And Bougie and, and Mr. Odoms. Praise God. Anyway, y'all be cool. God bless y'all. Love y'all, man. Look, I do this because I love y'all. Do it because I got a vested interest in the well-being of black men. I want you brothers to have peace of mind and happiness. Y'all make sure y'all buy my books. I got some books left, man. I got these books. Y'all got y'all buy these books. This will help guide you through a lot of this. A lot of the stuff that I'm able to explain to you is because I have an understanding of conflict and how things resolve themselves in this world. If you read that book, you have better. You'll be ahead of everybody else. In addition to that, uh, if you'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, man, just hit me up at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. I do that all the time. As I tell y'all, a lot of men just call me up because they want to know how to hide money from their wives because they plan it for a divorce. And uh, But a lot of guys help people, you know, get out of issues in medical school, get out of bad situations with other lawyers, evaluated their legal team, stuff like that. Man, I'm always here to help. So if you'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation, hit me up at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. And of course, thank you guys. If you want to continue contributing to the Cash App on the replay, just type the Cash App and type replay so I know as you and I give you a shout out at the next broadcast. But other than that, as I always said at this time, it's Uncle D. I love you guys. I love you with all my heart. And I thank the Most High for giving me this opportunity to speak to all you people because we had a full house tonight. Um, and so it's an honor and a blessing to do that. And I honor this privilege. And, uh, you know, other than that, it's Uncle D. And I'm out. <laughs>